Frankly, uh, the people that were questioning that statement, was it too tough? Maybe it wasn't tough enough. They've been doing this to our country for a long time, for many years. And it's about time that somebody stuck up for the people of this country and for the people of other countries. So, uh, if anything, maybe that statement wasn't tough enough. And we're backed by 100 percent by our military. We're backed by everybody. And we're backed by many other leaders. And I noticed that many senators and others today came out very much in favor of what I said. But if anything, that statement may not be tough enough. What would be tougher than firing Gary? Well, you'll see. You'll see. And I will tell you this. North Korea better get their act together, or they're going to be in trouble like few nations ever have been in trouble in this world. Wow. All right. So Mike Barnacle, uh, one day he threatens uh, nuclear annihilation of North Korea, um, the likes of which nobody's ever seen before. And the next day he goes, well, actually, that threat wasn't tough enough. You sort of understand why David Ignatius said this is the art of the deal meeting Dr. Strangelove. That that's correct, Joe. I mean, the President of the United States basically saying, bring it on again. And David Ignatius, writing in the Washington Post today, says that, quote, in dealing with North Korea, Trump needs allies, not bombast. President Trump has decided to confront what's probably the most reckless, risk-taking regime on the planet. His hope for a diplomatic solution depends on convincing North Korea and China that he's ready for the fire and fury of nuclear war should negotiations fail. If Hollywood were pitching the story, it would be the art of the deal meets Dr. Strangelove. The United States can't go it alone in Korea in either war or peace. The danger is that Trump's rhetoric could destabilize partners more than adversaries. At a moment that requires subtlety, Trump unwisely amped up his rhetoric once more Thursday, warning the North Koreans of things they never thought possible. He talks like the promoter of a WWE wrestling match, but this is real. At least this is real, but it's also reading between the lines, reading the lines themselves, incredibly dangerous. Well, and you look at, this is not happening just in a vacuum with North Korea. You look at how President Trump has upped the bombing campaigns in Iraq, in Syria, in Afghanistan, where in the first six months there has, there he's dropped nearly, he's nearly doubled the amount of bombs that we've dropped. And some independent monitors are saying that the civilian casualties are up by 10 times the amount that they were in the previous administrations. This is disturbing and we've become really immune and detached from a foreign policy that is so militarized and so over reliant on force. And right now, we should be having more public outcry about what does this idea of preventative war with North Korea mean? Well, there's this undeniable chaotic aspect to everything that's going on, everything that's coming out of Trump's mouth and the conflicting messages you're getting from defense and state and the White House. Th there are two principles here that are kind of undergirding what Trump is trying to accomplish. If you read very carefully what he was saying yesterday, the first, I think, is less likely to succeed and a lot riskier, and that is to try to draw North Korea to the negotiating table. I don't know how well that's going to work. But the second point, which I think is, is, is more likely to succeed in a little bit more rational, is that, you know, Russia and China have to take ownership of this problem as well. And that's what Trump was saying yesterday when he said, you know, I have great respect for Russia and China because they didn't oppose the Security Council resolution. So I think the White House sees some hope there in making them more equal partners. And Casey Hunt, we saw yesterday uh, Lindsey Graham and a few other Republicans coming out talking tough on North Korea. There are a lot of Republicans and some Democrats privately that have lost patience with China. China, of course, I, I, you know, so I, one of them uh, called uh, China or called North Korea uh, China's 51st state. Uh, that, that because they're the ones that that float them they're the ones that give them all of their imports that take all of their exports they're the ones that have been sitting by quietly over 30 years as this crisis has gotten uh, more uh, more and more significant so where are the Republicans on Capitol Hill with Trump here are they are they at the end of the day going to line up behind him on this outside of of course John McCain 
Well, Joe, look, I think that there's a lot of deference, both with Republicans and Democrats. I mean, this is this is a crisis and a situation that really unifies people across both parties, uh, ex with the exception of some people on both of the edges. Even you know Chuck Schumer's initial statement said, "Look." We have to be deliberate and very strong uh, in dealing with North Korea. Now, he also uh, took a shot at the president for his rhetoric around uh, the nuclear issue. But I think now there is a significant level of fear, quite frankly, uh, coming from both Repo uh, Democrats, obviously, but from a lot of Republicans behind the scenes. Because, again, and we've talked about this over and over again, the, whether or not the president is a Republican, is not a Republican, Republicans in Congress, Republicans in government uh, have viewed themselves since Trump was elected as the ballast in the ship of state. And this is uh, the crisis that has most threatened to set the entire ship uh, potentially sinking. And I think uh, they may right. not be saying it publicly, but there's a lot of fear behind the scenes. There is a lot of fear behind the scenes, Mike Barnacle. There's also a lot of frustration, though. This is something even people high up in the Bush administration said, hey, this is something we screwed up. The Clinton administration dropped the ball on it. The Bush administration dropped the ball on it. The Obama administration kicked the can down the road. It's, it's fascinating. You have Republicans and Democrats alike from the Bush administration, the Clinton administration, and the Obama administration all saying quietly behind the scenes, yeah, we could have done a better job on that. And the can has been kicked down to the road to the point now where over the next four years, probably even sooner than that, North Korea will be able to deliver a nuclear weapon to Seattle, to Portland, to San Francisco, to Los Angeles, and all points in between. So this is, it, this is a fascinating time. People are frightened by what Donald Trump's saying. At the same time, they know that uh, some really tough decisions are ahead. Yeah, well, and one of the tough decisions, Joe, go, uh, ahead in the immediate future, not, not next month, not next year, but right now, is if North Korea <laughs> decides to have a missile test any time within the next week, the defense establishment, substantial elements of the defense establishment, are going to say, okay, that could be nuclear tipped. And what's our reaction? What's our reaction to a right. test missile run that the Defense Department and the intelligence agencies say, hey, wow, it's up and it's nuclear tipped. What do we do then? Yeah. That's our problem. That's the world's problem. Joe, just very quickly, that, it's done. I yeah. actually, you know, nobody's been more critical of Trump. I didn't have a huge problem with what he did, to tell you the truth. Uh, and I, I think you were kind of dancing around it just <clears> now <throat> in that um, we have a leader in, in North Korea whose only objective is to stay in power. He doesn't want to blow himself up. And... I actually think that rhetoric was kind of needed at this point. Is it? Nobody's been more critical of this guy. Um, I and a lot of people I talked to also, and this is not going to do well for me in the Hamptons this weekend, under their breath was saying, you know what, maybe that needed to be said. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I've got to say, Donnie, of course, I never go to places like the Hamptons. I'm man <laughs> of the people right now in middle America. But I will tell you, I have been shocked in middle America hearing people saying the same thing. Um, uh, behind the scenes, uh, yes, they're frightened by the rhetoric, but at the same well, time, then they say, well, you know what, though? What the hell is, did, did Bill Clinton, George Bush, and Barack Obama absolutely. do? We haven't been standing up to the Chinese for 30 years. But really quickly, uh, Joe, been, this is just how the snowball effect starts. Wars are very easy to get into. And it gets right. nasty really quickly. And that's why we all should be having a debate about what this means if we are going to have military strikes against North Korea. Well, this would be the nastiest of debates. Some people are out there saying, oh, well, we rolled over Iraq in a couple of weeks. North Korea is not Iraq. It, it would be extraordinarily ugly, not only for American troops and North Koreans, but South Koreans, possibly Japan. Uh, this would be as ugly as it gets. We'll talk more about that. Also still ahead, the president shocks members of his administration once again with another freewheeling response to a serious foreign policy matter. This time, he actually thanks Vladimir Putin for expelling U.S. diplomats. We'll dig into that straight ahead. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.